Hello and welcome to the Cisco CyberOps Associate Lab video series. I'm going to be walking through each of the major labs of the Cisco CyberOps Associate Netacad curriculum. So let's go and let's jump on in. In this lab, we're looking at Lab 3310. This is the creating user account. We're going to be doing this in Windows 10. And the assumption is you've completed the previous lab where we set up a Windows 10 machine for us to use. So this lab has three parts, creating a new user, reviewing user account properties, and modifying local users. Again, we're going to be using a Windows 10 machine, and we're going to walk through each of these settings in each of the main parts. Again, three main parts creating a user, reviewing a user, modifying a user. All right, so I have my Windows 10 machine. It is a basic installation, which we set up in a, a previous lab. So if uh, you're following along the lab guide, your user is gonna be whatever user you set up. I set my user as student. The lab guide has us set up a cyber op user. It just kind of depends on which user you have. So step one is creating a new user account. So we can do this a plethora of ways. We can go to start, uh, start type in user. We we'll, should be able to see the add, edit, remove other users. So that's one way in settings. We can also go to control panel. user accounts and you'll notice if we go to user accounts we have the ability here is our current user we can manage another account we can add in additional users here so that's two third way if we're browsing the machine right click this PC go to manage wait for it to load we have our local users and groups right click new user you can manipulate the groups there as well so again we have multiple ways to do this task the instructions have us going through our lab guide or, or sorry the lab guide has us going through the control panel so that's what we'll do we'll click on add new user and you'll notice even though we're in control panel, the add new user keeps opening up settings. And so that's what we have to do. We have the ability to do a Microsoft account if we want, or we can do adding another user to this machine. If we scroll down, we have help down here if we want help. Adding someone else to this PC, you'll notice it instantly tries to connect to Microsoft. It's wanting a Microsoft Live account. And what I want to do is I want to add a user without a Microsoft account. It wants us to name our user CyberOp user. So CyberOp user. And from here, we need to set a password. And uh, it doesn't give us the details of the password. So we'll go ahead and make one. I just did password capital P at sign SS W O R D uppercase special character lowercases because it is um, <laughs> Windows it wants us to go through this entire process If we would have done this through the manage portion, through our 
are this PC and clicking manage, it would not have made us do security questions. And here we have a local account. So double checking, double checking, manage account, new user, go to settings, user without a Microsoft account. All right, so it does not say anything about this user being a administrator or not, so I'm going to keep it a regular user. If you do want to modify the account type, click on modify account type and you can select either standard or admin. We're going to leave it as standard. And I'm going to go back, manage the account, and here we now see our new user. Let's sign in as that user. capital P at sign SSWORD and if you did a different password that's fine it's just make sure you know what your password is so that you can log in it will generate them a new profile so it's gonna go through getting ready for a new PC and that entire whole nine yards so just be patient with it while it does its process And sadly, this does take a minute or two, so again, be patient. Because it is a new user, you're going to get your privacy settings, so go ahead and set these according to what you want. I turn them all off. All right, so I'm logged in at my machine. I'm going to open up a file browser. I'm going to navigate to my C drive, users, and now I can see student and our CyberOps user. That way we can determine, well, first of all, what, what's what? Our CyberOps user, our profile was recently set up, and so the date modified will all be today because that's when the user was created. So it wants us to right-click on our user that we created, go to Properties, and look at security. So the system has full control. The cyber op user has full control. The administrator has full control. If we look at our original user, you'll notice we don't get to see the security permissions because we don't even have read permissions. We're also not a administrator. So we can't do it. We can uh, have the UAC prompt us, but we don't have a user. So let's go ahead and log off and log back in as our original user. And let's go ahead, navigate back to users. And I'm also going to go ahead and open up my CyberOps user, my new one. And you'll notice I don't have permission to access the security of CyberOps user. I do have access to my profile as well as the administrators they, they administrators is the group that has access to everyone and you'll notice there's two people next to each other that's how you know it's a group the interesting part is I'm gonna click on advanced again I, I don't have the ability to, to read any of the details until I continue because my original user is a administrator I can actually view the properties because administrators 
are allowed to view them. My user student is an administrator. It, it belongs to the administrator group. So I can actually access it. I don't have permissions because I technically don't have any permissions, but I'm in a group that does. So if I click continue, it will double check the, the groups that I belong to and then grant me access because I do belong to the administrators group and once I accessed it and it realized I was the administrator it gave me my individual user account full access all right, so we've taken care of part one, creating a new local user. So in the next step, it wants us to go ahead and go to our manage. All right, I already had one open, so that was my bad. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my folder. So I can see my users and groups. The little down arrow means they're disabled. I have a student and that's it. If I right click and refresh, it will pull down from settings my CyberOp user. It wasn't there because when I opened up computer management at the very beginning, my CyberOp user wasn't then created. It was only after I created the account, but my computer management window was never refreshed, so it never populated. All right, so we're already looking at our users. We already see it. If we look at our properties, we can see what properties uh, changing logon at the next or changing password at the next logon. User can't change their password. The password never expires, account disabled, account is locked out. We also have members of, we're only a member of the user. Since we're logged in as students, which is part of the administrator's group, we can add CyberOp user to another group if we wanted to, or we can also then manipulate his profile. We could put in scripts, we can put in a path, we could put in a map drive if we wanted. We can do all types of stuff. All right, so that took care of part two. The last part is modifying local users. So it wants us to go ahead and delete the user. So navigate to control panel, manage another user. In the uh, active window, change the type to administrator. All right. So our CyberOp user is not an administrator. We see that. Using our settings, change account type to administrator. They are administrator on the local account. I'm going to double check the properties members of. I did not have to refresh because when I right clicked on it and hit properties it refreshed before accessing the properties and I can see that it's a administrator. If I want to remove their administrator ability and I click remove I'll refresh it again. Member is no longer part of the administrators but over here it still says administrators. If we back out, you'll notice it's no longer administrator, it's back to a standard user. And so that was part three, step one, change in the user. We're going to go ahead and delete the user, and then we have two reflection questions. 
importing to protect the accounts with strong passwords, and why would you create a user with standard privileges? So I'm going to delete the user, then we'll do the reflection, and then our lab will be complete. So CyberOp user, right click, delete. It does have a unique identifier, a SID. So deleting the user account will de delete the identifier and cannot be restored. That is okay. I'm currently logged in. If I log in, if I delete it, the logged in user won't be able to log in again. All right, users deleted. Their profile, however, is not. Their data is still present. The user isn't. It's just a single user now, but the profile for that user still exists. All right, so why is it important to protect all accounts with strong passwords? Because any account that has access to the system can access the system. You can do a lot with just local access. Not administrator access, not affecting the entire machine, just affecting your own account. So protecting all accounts with strong passwords protects the entire system as a whole and individual account. That one. Question number two, why would you create a user with standard privileges? Because you don't want to have everyone have the ability with administrator access. When I give a computer to an office worker, I don't want them the ability to make modifications to the entire system. They can make changes to their account, but I don't want them making a changes to other people's accounts. Thus, I make them a standard user. That way, it makes things just a little bit better. So this was lab 3310, creating a user account. So that was all we had for this lab. Again, questions, concerns, definitely feel free to reach out. Thank you. All right, so that does it for this lab video. A few suggestions would be, one, run through the lab a second time, trying to do it by yourself. Two, I would do a summary of kind of what you learned, where you struggled, and keep that type of journal going so that you can build off of it. Third, and finally, take time to reflect. These labs start off fairly easy, and then they grow in complexity, so some of the labs you may have to redo a few times to fully grasp what's going on. If you have any questions or any concerns, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.